apologies in advance. You're gonna see way too much of my messy studio than I would like, but it's a very effective way to show off this crazy lens. This is 25 mil in micro four thirds, so 50 mil in full frame. And this <laughs> is the Maker 3.5 mil lens. I'm so small, I've not moved. <laughs> Let me tell you about this lens. So this is the Maker 3.5mm crazy spherical fisheye lens. I've had a lot of fun with this lens. I've had it for ages now, but because of gestures broadly at the world, there's not been enough stock, so not really a point for me to make this video. So I'm very, very happy to say that now things are getting back to normal and I want to tell you all about this lens. So first of all, out of the way, it's a maker lens, which means the build quality is superb. It's full metal, all of the rings are clickless, and it just feels like a beautiful, well-built, compact little lens. And in terms of image quality, it's actually surprisingly sharp, but given what the heck it's actually doing, Please don't expect the earth. When I say it's sharp, I mean it took me by surprise because given the field of view, it is, it must be an incredible task to make anything pin sharp in that sort of focal length. So it is sharp and I shall pixel peep for you now just to show you. And the focus peaking works fantastically. So it is definitely a sharp lens, but it's sharp in its own category. It is very, very good at what it does. Is there fringing? Of course there's fringing. Have you seen this lens? You should expect a moderate amount of purple or blue fringing around the edges of your image, just because, you know, it's, it's crazy. But it's very easy to manage. It doesn't take away from the quality of the image. You can remove it in editing. And it's, again, nowhere near as bad as I was expecting. It's actually a very well controlled lens. I just think the main benefit of this lens really is if you want to do something that's completely unconventional and, and almost unique, you know, I haven't seen many sort of lenses like this on the market. If you want to really test your composition skills and, and just go out and have fun with a different style of lens, I think you could make some fantastic images with this. It really gets you thinking outside of the box because it really gets you thinking outside of the box because, you know, you, you have to get this far away from something in order to sort of put it in the centre of frame. You could get so much in the shot. You know, imagine standing in an empty stadium with this lens or uh, seeing a crowd at a gig. You know, I think <laughs> I haven't managed to test those things yet, just as wildly at the world again, but I think you could come up with some fantastic creative ways to use this lens, for sure. Now, there are two things to bear in mind. Number one, the field of view is so wide, your fingers are in the shot. Your legs are in the shot. If this lens had the ability to look behind itself, it would probably get the whole world in its shot. So you do need to bear in mind, you might have to hold your camera a little bit weirdly like this. Okay, there is a terrible demonstration on how to take a picture with this camera. If we take a picture like this, then my fingers are in the frame. And so we have to hold it sort of... <laughs> oh no, they're still in the frame. Like that. And then sometimes your feet are in the frame. I guess you could hold the bottom hand like that and the top hand like that. You just have to be careful that if you hold it like this, you get your finger in the lens as well. Or, alternatively, own it. Put yourself in the image, in the composition. Or get used to photoshopping little bits and bobs out here and there. It's not the end of the world, and as long as you don't, like, take over the entire shot with your fingers, I do think it would be very easy to fix. Also, bear in mind, these photos were taken on my GH5, which has sort of the chonky kind of grip. If you were to shoot these on um, a flatter Micro Four Thirds camera, like a Pen F or a GX80, then you wouldn't have your fingers in the shot quite so much. My only other con, and this is me being super duper nitpicky, is actually in this instance, I think I would have preferred the aperture rings and the focus rings 
that's aperture rings and focus rings. <laughs> to be clicky, because, well, here is a video of me trying to take this lens off a camera. As you can see, because it is so compact and because all of the bits and bobs are quite close together, it's quite hard to actually get purchase on this lens when you're taking it on and off. Again, super small picky thing. I mean, it takes two seconds to reset your settings, but just keep that in mind that when you take the lens on and off, you'll probably move all the dials and you'll need to put it back to how it was. If the aperture rings were clicky and had a little bit of resistance, I imagine, this would be less, or at least you would hear it and notice it a little bit more. But again, very small, nitpicky, nitpicky, nitpickiness. So there we go. I hope you enjoyed the test footage. I hope you are inspired by this lens because I think in the right hands, in the right circumstances, you could get some amazing stuff with this lens. And I'm very excited to just, you know, pop it in my bag and if the situation were to arise, just go wild with it. You know, imagine inside a cathedral, um, you could even do really abstract stuff, like trying to get it inside like a, an acoustic guitar body or something. You know, there's so many cool things you could do with it. I'm excited to experiment more. What do you think of the lens? If you want to learn more about it, I've put all of the links to all of the usual places in the comments below. And I do believe for a limited time there may be a discount for us nerds. Have a read. And yeah, I'll speak to you in the comments. Thank you very much for watching. <clears throat> That's not in focus. That's not even slightly in focus. Focus test. I'm sick of my videos being slightly out of focus.